Hello, this is Irv Shapiro with the Make With Tech YouTube channel, where we teach people how to use desktop technologies to make things. Today, we're going to cover a bit more advanced topic. We're going to begin a series of advanced videos about parameters in the various slicers that allow you to fine tune your prints. And by fine tuning your prints, that allow you to print really beautiful items. And we have some beautiful items here, but we also have a test print that we're going to look at. Here you can see it in two colors, so you can get a little better idea of what it looks like. And in order to print detail on an FDM, filament-based 3D printer, you're going to need to tune your slicer settings. Today specifically, we're going to look at Cura version 4.11, but it applies to most version 4.x and later versions of Cura, and the concepts will apply to any slicer. So stay tuned, and let's learn something together. Okay, this video today is going to be a little bit different than some of the other videos I have on the channel. First of all, it's a much more advanced topic. So if you don't already have experience with Cura, with slicers, with 3D printers, I've linked a bunch of playlists, three different playlists up above. So to make sure you see all of the videos I publish, please subscribe to the channel and click on that bell so you're notified about new videos. Now, very often, videos produced about something like a slicer piece of software are done as screencasts. You, you see a picture of the screen and maybe there's a little guy in the corner talking about it. I didn't use that approach here. Instead, I created images for the various concepts, which include images of the actual software, and I did it because it allows me to ensure that the images are clear they're the right scale to make sure everything you need to see is truly visible. So leave some comments below and let me know if you like this approach. Now to get started with this topic, I do have to make sure one concept is very clear. And that concept is simply that a 3D printer is just an automated glue gun. This is a 20 year old glue gun made by Black & Decker. I probably bought in the local hardware store. It has a glue stick. Think of that as filament. It has a nozzle. Think of that as a nozzle of a hot end. It has a heat sink area and that's all 3D printer is. So all 3D printer is, is a glue gun being driven by stepper motors instead of you or I. And the pressure that I push here on the glue stick is the extrusion rate that I'm trying to get out of this nozzle. Now let's think about that nozzle a bit. And in fact, if you look here, this is a Creality stock hot end. It's really the same as this glue gun. The nozzle's just a lot smaller. You see here on the screen that the only thing that's really important about the nozzle is the opening at the very bottom. That opening at the bottom has a fixed size. Typical nozzle for most off-the-shelf 3D printers, FDM style 3D printers is 0.4 millimeters. That means if I melt filament and push it through that nozzle, I'm gonna get 0.4 millimeters. That's no different than your toothpaste. You squeeze on the tube, you're going to get a bead of toothpaste that comes out that's the size of the opening in the tube of toothpaste. Now, what if I want the bead of filament to be smaller? Well, I put less pressure on the filament. That's not very precise. That's gonna help, but it's not very precise. I also have to combine that with enough speed. The filament may or may not have absorbed more moisture. That will impact its flow rate. Different filaments from different brands have different flow rates. What if I want that bead to be wider? 
well, I push harder on that tube of toothpaste on that hot glue gun or on my 3D printer extruder. Not very precise. So while I have a bit of control over the width, most of the time it's gonna be relatively close, let's say plus or minus 25%, 30% to the size of the nozzle, which is 0.4. Now, how does that relate to layer height and line width? Let's look at this picture here. The layer height is relatively precise because we have a stepper motor that's moving the nozzle up a fixed amount. I can control that. But if I move the nozzle up higher than the size of the bead, there's gonna be a bit of an air gap. The filament's gonna drip down till it hits the bead below. It's going to distort the size of that bead. If I don't move the nozzle up the full size of the bead, the bead's going to get spread out a little bit. It's going to flatten. So the beads aren't going to be round like they always are here in this picture. So while nozzle height is more precisely controllable, it's not absolute. Line width is the terminology used in Cura for the extruded bead width. The default is generally the size of your nozzle. So if you 0.4 millimeter nozzle, the standard line width in Cura is going to be 0.4 millimeters. How does that relate to walls? A wall is a number of lines. So in Cura, you define a layer height that's going to control how the stepper moves up and down. You define a wall thickness and the wall thickness divided by the line width will give you the number of walls. So in the picture here, you'll see a, the red dots are outer walls. The green dots are inner walls. So you have one outer wall and two inner walls. And we have two layers of filament. Now, one of the interesting things that I have not personally tested, but I've watched a range of videos about this topic are that if you want a stronger model, you want to increase the number of walls versus increasing the density of the fill. This relates to the idea that strength really comes in a number of different characteristics. There's crush strength, the ability to crush something. Well, clearly the density of the fill will make a big difference there. But there's twisting and there's pulling and there's tearing. In all other areas, the number of walls is more important. The first model we're going to look at is just a disc with a polygon on top. I produced this in FreeCAD and this is what it looks like in FreeCAD. And now this is what it looks like in Cura. The nozzle size is 0.4 millimeters. I have the wall size set at 1.2 millimeters, which gives us a wall count of three walls. You can see there's a red wall and two green walls. The red wall is the outer wall. The green walls are the inner wall. What is the yellow? The yellow is the bottom. So when you have filament being extruded as part of the bottom or the top, it shows in yellow in Kira. How am I seeing this? I'm seeing this with the preview screen. Now, the next model we're going to look at together is this model with lines of different widths. And I'm sure it's very hard to see, or I printed it in two colors to try to make it easier. I'm sure you can't see it here, but you'll be able to see it on the screen. So let's look at the model first. Here's the model in FreeCAD. And I created a wall that's 0.4 millimeters wide, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1.1 and 1.6 millimeters wide. Here's a three-dimensional view of that model so you can see what you're printing. I also added type on the bottom of the model that's four millimeters high. Now let's think about that type for a minute. The height of the letters or the font size really has nothing to do with how successfully it'll print. We're going to see success will be all about the size of the individual strokes. Now, on the left-hand side, 
you'll see this model loaded into Cura, ready to be sliced. On the right hand side, you'll see in preview mode what the slice looks like. What's the difference you notice right away? On the left hand side, the 0.4 millimeter line, the 0.4 millimeter wide line is displayed. On the right hand side, it's missing completely. You'll see the next three lines above it, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.2, only have exterior walls, red walls. And there was only wall room for an interior wall at the top one, which I believe was 1.6 millimeters wide. So what happened here? So the rule in Cura is that any line segment that's the size of your nozzle or smaller will not print. So the 0.4 millimeter line didn't print. The 0.6 millimeter line did. So to demonstrate that that's really happening, I took and I created a printer definition in Cura for the same Ender 5 printer with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle size. And you'll see here now two lines are not printing. If I had created a printer profile with a 0.3 millimeter nozzle, all of the lines would print. But can I push the limits here a little bit? Well, I can because there's a special feature in Cura. If I need to print lines that are thinner than my nozzle, I in essence have to ask the printer to extrude less filament and cheat on that width. The way I do that, or one way to do that, would be to change the line width to less than the size of the nozzle. But that won't fix this problem. Instead, to fix this problem, I need to tell Cura to print thin lines. And now you'll see that that bottom line is displayed. And in fact, when I printed that, it came out quite beautiful. Now, this Ender 5 printer that I'm printing on is finely tuned. I've tuned the extrusion and flow rates to make sure they're perfect. And that allows me to print quite a bit of detail, even with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. This next example is a really beautiful piece of cosmetic jewelry uh, that I was printing as a necklace for one of my granddaughters. And you could, of course, scale this down, and then I guess you end up with earrings. And it has remarkable detail. I downloaded it from Thingiverse. You'll find it in the listing below. Now, it has relatively thin lines, but they're all big, larger than 0.4 millimeters. But they're not necessarily as large as my wall width. So let's look at this screen here, and we'll see on the left-hand side that the red lines are the outer walls and the green lines are the inner walls. And you'll see if you look closely, and I'll highlight some of those for you, there are areas in the red walls where gray is showing through. Gray indicates that there's not going to be any plastic printed there. So we're going to have an element that on here looks solid, but there's going to be a gap in the middle. If we look on the right-hand side, we'll see everywhere there would have been a gap, we now have yellow filling in that gap. The way you ensure that happens is by setting a couple Cura parameters. Let's look at those quickly. The first is fill gaps between walls. We want to make sure that's enabled. In our case, I've enabled it everywhere, and you have an option of everywhere or nowhere. The second is print thin walls. That'll just ensure, as we've seen before, if any of these are less than 0.4 millimeters, they print. Now, in general, I found that compensate wall overhangs should be turned off. This is a feature that ensures that if two walls intersect, at the intersection, there's not a blob of filament 
because of those intersections. This is a bit of a newer feature and I found it's not optimized yet. So I generally leave that off. So if I want to ensure a clean print, I'll set fill gaps between walls and print thin walls. What does filter out tiny gaps do? Well, that says if the gap between the walls, if the gap in the model is smaller than a very small amount, don't attempt to put a dot of filament in there. I generally leave that off because as you see here, I want those yellow dots to be filled in. Now let's look at up close how this actually looks in a printed model. On the right hand side, you'll see with the fill gaps everywhere is turned on. On the left hand side, it's turned off. And let me magnify this a bit, but you'll see some examples here where you can see there are openings in the lines themselves, whereas here they're actually solid. Now, one more interesting thing to learn when printing a model such as this. By default, Cura is going to print interwalls first. And the way they, the reason they do that is to ensure you get better dimensional accuracy. However, that has a side effect in print adhesion. Here's what this print looks like about a third of the way through on the first layer. You'll see all the green. Those are all the inner walls. You'll notice those are quite small. Well, in fact, many of those were not sticking successfully to my print bed. So by the time it got to the place where it was printing the outer walls, I had things warping off the print bed. If we look at this sample here, I switched the order. I told it to print outer walls first. And here, you'll see all the outer walls have been printed and they're all interconnected. So because they're interconnected, they end up sticking to the print surface much better. Then it begins to print the inner walls. So to get the most successful print, actually this one here, where all of the walls were properly connected, there was no warping, I printed it with the outer walls first and fill gaps everywhere. And I believe I used a three line wall. So because I have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle size, I set the wall width to 1.2 millimeters, which is three walls. Well, folks, I hope you learned something today. If you did, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up and let's continue to learn things together.